this locker room, and there was a big, huge swimming pool on the other side. But as I looked around, I saw the lockers were like old, and they were dusty, and they'd been neglected. And uh, as I was pondering this, and knowing that there were people that came right in, and they were all standing like ready, waiting to go forward. They knew who they were. They had been trained. They um, were in it all the way. And um, I, I sensed the Lord was showing me that, especially with what uh, Andy had shared and Jamie, um, that because of the neglect and because of uh, just laying everything aside, not caring anymore, not, not remembering uh, what their purpose was, that there were others that came and they had been prepared. They were ready, and they were ready to go. And, and the pool, I thought, had to do with the race. We're in this race. We're not contending with each other, but we're all running in this race to accomplish and do the things that God has put in our heart to do. And not only will God raise others up if we're not willing, right? But that can happen, and that does happen. Because we've been given, given so much. But we need to know who we are. And we need to go forward in what God's put in our life and, and just be ready. I mean, they were ready. They knew who they were. And they were off to the races. And um, I thought, oh, that just fits in so well. And I've also seen the thing that um, Jamie had seen uh, those critters. Well, I saw the traps. I saw these traps that were set up. They weren't big enough to really hurt a person. Why? They were too small to catch them. But they were annoying. There was all these annoying little critters and, and uh, what do I say? traps. And so I feel like the Lord is saying in that that there's all these things that are bothering our minds all the time. They're, they're struggles with the things we see around us, the, the, uh, the bombardment that we constantly have. They're not big enough to really hurt us, but we entertain them. Because we entertain them and we see they're there, we get thrown off and we forget who we are. Amen. So let's not miss what God wants to do. Because yeah. we've had a lot of prophetic words corporately, individually, all those things. But how many know that generally prophecy is conditional? It's dependent on our obedience. So just because God spoke something, let's not miss it. Okay? So I, I feel there's a real there's a real heaviness of the spirit right now. It's not a, a time as usual moment or a life as usual. We have to make some big adjustments right now. So, hallelujah. All right, praise God. Amen. <laughs> well, welcome everybody. Um, we're going to take an offering in just a moment, but first I want Jamie to come and make announcements and facilitate what else she needs to facilitate. So,
lunch today. Where he wanted to eat for for Father's Day today, and I said, "No, where else?" <laughs> <laughs> Choose again. <laughs> so we just want to bless you guys. Thank you guys for being fathers, for being good fathers, for, for being those who um, who are being a part of bringing up the next generation and being spiritual fathers and physical fathers to to very to many, many, many. Some of you are fathers to many. And I just want to read this scripture um, today, Proverbs 27. It's kind of a strange scripture, but maybe some of you will find it strange, but I find it not. The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after. The righteous man walks in integrity, and his children are blessed after. We are so blessed by the fathers before us because of their integrity. So I challenge you and I commission you and I admonish you to continue to walk in integrity that your children and those, even your spiritual children, shall be blessed after you. Even if they don't deserve it because of your integrity, they get blessed. Isn't that fantastic? I think a lot of us are living in blessing that we don't deserve because of our Father's integrity. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Sometimes you think, why is that rotten kid being so blessed? Because their father walked in integrity. integrity is the scripture and we're blessed beyond so father we just thank you for the fathers of this house father we thank you that you are the ultimate father and you've raised up fathers and you're raising up fathers and father even those who aren't yet fathers are being fathers so god i bless them we ask that you just give them a supernatural grace this year as they walk out fatherhood in a whole new way and new level god give them more spiritual children those to, to pour their life into. God, give them the grace to pour their lives into someone else. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 I don't know any announcements. Sorry. All right. So, a few announcements before that we take the offering and before we dismiss the Children's Church. Um, we continue to pray for people. Um, a lot of people had mishaps and falls and a lot of stuff. Wednesday night, we'll continue our prayer time, and then also, um, I think the date is, it's the second Sunday in July that Joe Moody will be back with us, and then two weeks after that, uh, Ian Carroll will be here as well, so we have a big July coming up, so amen. All right, let's stand, let's make our offering declaration together. Also give at globalharvestchurch.co. Amen. So let's make this declaration. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Dismiss the kids to go to nursery and children's church. Hallelujah. Also, we'll try to get you a little bit more information, but the reason that Joe Moody is going to be in Oklahoma, 
she'll be here for a global awakening supernatural intensive that's going on in Oklahoma City for that entire week. And um, Jamie and I will be in and out of that some as much as we can. It's an incredible lineup. And of course, it's one of those things that you do have to pay. It's a decent fun fee. It's a school. But it's like from 9 to 5 every day. But some of the speakers are people like Mike Hutchings, Robbie Dawkins, um, Ken Moss, Alan Hawkins, Ken Fish, um, Jim Burkett, uh, Dale Mass, Joe uh, Moody. And so um, I'll try to share some information on that. And, um, the evening services are free, and so we'll try to find a schedule and uh, figure out how to facilitate that with everybody. So I know I did post it in the group a few weeks ago. Schedule, but um, this is something that they're doing that they hope to do every year. So um, we'll see how that goes. But I just wanted to mention to that to you guys again. Amen. So praise God. Everybody doing good? All right. It's good to see you this morning. So I want to jump in. God's already said a lot. Right? He's, he's saying a lot. He's doing a lot. He's moving. Um, it's one of the, obviously one of the most intense moments that uh, we've seen in. Uh, seeing in the church there's such a great need for intercession at this moment there's such a great need uh, to represent Jesus and be the hands and the feet of Jesus and to love like he did and uh, you know we need to be people that really know what he's saying amen, amen. and uh, you know we were talking about at the beginning it was actually at the end of May that uh, we walked in through a new door at Pentecost I, I really believe that. I believe something happened. Now, sometimes we think that when we walk into a new season or through a new, new door, that warfare will cease. Right? That, that upheaval and turmoil and those things will cease. Well, that, that usually doesn't happen, how many of you know? And sometimes it actually intensifies, right? Because there's the reality that the wheat and the tares are growing up in the earth together. Right? You read those things in the in, in the Gospel of Matthew, and that even though there's a tremendous glory, there's a, a tremendous thing that's happening with the church and with Revelation and all those things, but also there's a lot of not so good things that are maturing as well. Right? And so we have to be people that know what the Lord is saying. Now, one of the keys to Pentecost and the outpouring of the Spirit is the ability to hear God's voice. And declare what he is saying through the prophetic anointing. Amen. That's what happened at Pentecost. Suddenly, everybody, now, how many know that the followers of Jesus had already been doing miracles? Right? They'd already been commissioned. They were seeing the miraculous happen. But with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was the reality that everybody became a prophetic person who was in the kingdom. Amen. There was an outpouring of the Spirit. So, we have to be prophetic people. Amen. Well, you may be like, well, I'm not a prophet. No, not all of us are prophets in here. Right? But we're all called to be prophetic people. Because our normal as the people of God are that we hear his voice. Amen. And so, you know, a couple weeks ago, I shared four keys to hearing God's voice. Right? I went back to something very basic. We have to be people that not only know how to hear God's voice, but we have to be people that actually listen. Right. Right? Because we can say, well, we're prophetic people, but if how many of you know if you never practice hearing the voice of God? You're, you're missing it. And you can't be a prophet. Well, we go to a prophetic church. Well, when's the last time you listened to God? outside of a service. <laughs> right? We have to practice his presence. We have to practice his voice. So, and, and, and if you want to be prophetic, you have to know God. You have to spend time with him. Right? If you want to be in a relationship with somebody, you have to spend time with them. Right? That's a principle that we understand. And, you know, if you are a sheep, and we all want to be sheep, honestly, in this, in this manner, right? <laughs> if you're a sheep, you 
hear God's voice. It's your normal. My sheep hear my voice. They, they follow me. Right? The voice of a stranger they won't follow. Why? Because they know the voice of the Lord. Amen? Now last week, we talked about the new creation reality. Right? That the moment that you were born again, you became a new creation. Okay? And that it is your nature to know God. It's your nature to follow God. It's your, you can't say, well, I'm just a sinner. No, your nature is to know God. Yeah. Right? And so you can still sin, but it is not natural for you to sin. Right? So as a believer, when you start getting into sin, and we were talking about that a little bit this morning, suddenly you start living abnormally. So if your life is like jacked up and you can't figure out why, and you can't figure out why you don't have peace, you may not be living according to the new creation normal, right? And so the reality is when we become in this new creation, it's suddenly very normal for us to be prophetic, right? Now, in the Old Testament, the anointing came upon people, right? Right? But in the New Testament, there is an anointing that dwells within us. You realize you don't really have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. He dwells within you. Right? Now, you know, sometimes when God moves in an atmosphere, when he inhabits a region, it's crazy. He's dwelling in you. He's dwelling upon you. But there is an anointing that dwells within us. And the anointing that rested and came upon Old Testament prophets now dwells within you. Right? Yeah. Hallelujah. The manifestation of the gifts, of his presence, of those things, it comes from Christ who lives within us, not Christ who is seated above us. Right? Some of you are like, I don't know. Right? No, it's within you. Holy Spirit, God himself, by his spirit, if you are born again, he dwells within you. Amen. And there is a resident anointing within you. Now, when we come together, when we're all walking in his presence and carrying his glory, what happens when we all come together? There's a greater glory. There's a greater manifestation. He's building us into a temple as living stones by his presence. Amen. Yeah. So that's what he's doing. Now, and I think we can all agree, we need the prophetic anointing operating in our lives and in the church more than ever in this new season yeah. that we're in. Oh, I mean, have, have in the last three, four months, have you been like, what is going on? Oh, no, no. Anybody had that thought? you had that thought.
so we need to be people that not only hear what he's saying, but declare what he's saying. Amen. We have to be people who hear and declare. Now, I'm going to tell you, there are some people who don't want to hear what God's declaring. A lot of them are in the church. Because one of our biggest problems in the American church is we're so comfortable. And when God starts shaking things and moving things, our, our thing is, here's our biggest thing. We don't want to lose our way of life. And when God's saying, I want to do something new, well, that sounds good in a meeting. Lord's doing a new thing. And we've heard that about 537 times. But then when he really starts doing it, it's uncomfortable. Right? New things are uncomfortable. How many people like to move? <laughs> there are a whole lot of people that moved this week, the last two weeks, right? And it was uncomfortable. to start a new job. I mean, sometimes it's really good and it's the Lord and everything, and then you have to learn a new system or a new program or you have to figure out what your boss likes, right? Or maybe you're the boss and suddenly you have employees for the first time, which presents a whole new challenge. Right? New things are uncomfortable, so we have to know what the Lord is saying. It is our normal. You are supposed to hear what God is saying. Amen. And so we have to be prophetic people. And we have to be a prophetic church. Now, prophetic church is fun as long as you're getting encouraging words. Isn't that great? Don't you love when you do prophetic activations and people are like, the Lord says you're so Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> she can do it, right? But I want to just kind of lay a foundation and then move into the more advanced stuff. Because in, in God's saying, He's wanting us to mantle us with something new. He's wanting to take us in. Like, everybody's terrified. Don't be scared. You know, the, the deer in the headlights. Right? I don't know, because how many other times have God said, listen, you know, you've had corn dogs and macaroni and cheese enough. When you're a kid, isn't that great? It's just the best. Right? And you'll eat that stuff, and you'll never, and then, you, you know, it's like the other day when I, I had Spam for the first time in years, and I was like, this is disgusting. I just remember how good it was as a kid, and you fry it, and or you put it on a sandwich with mustard and cheese, right? And I was so, so excited to find that Spam in, the, in my mom's pantry, and I cooked it, and I was like, this is so and this, that stuff that it's in looks like from that movie Alien, all that goo. You know? Now give me a ribeye. Alien. Now we laugh about that, but there's something about that, that was good for a season. If you like spam, I'm not good. Right? But it, you might stalk your cab, cabinet because COVID right, is crazy. But when God calls you into something good, what was good for the past season, that was okay. Right? But now he's wanting to feed you something that is going to bring you into maturity. Right? And so, because we can't keep eating or keep having just milk when the Lord wants to give us meat. And there's a whole lot of the church today that's like, don't really give me any conviction or maturity because I like the way I'm living. And that may not, I'm not talking even about sin. But, yeah. I'm talking about a call into maturity and growth. Amen. So, now let's go over some basic things for just a moment. I know many of you have been through Supernatural School, and we did our last session for this term on Monday night. Hallelujah, we got to the fruit and all those things. We've got a graduation in the works. Um, but uh, we've talked about some of this in Supernatural School, but I want to review for just a moment. Now let's turn to 1 Corinthians 14.3. What is the purpose of prophetic ministry? Simple prophetic ministry that we can all do, amen, if we're believers. 1 Corinthians 14.3. The one who prophesies speaks to men, to women, for edification and exhortation and consolation. Okay, let's go ahead and read verse 4 as well. One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Right? That's a good thing. Anybody like to be edified? We all need it, don't we? So speaking in tongues is good, but one who prophesies edifies the church. Amen. Now, so according to this verse, in basic prophecy, here's what is accomplished for individuals and for the church. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you where we're going. We're probably not going to get there to today. But when we start looking at a little more advanced on what the prophetic is and people who are growing in their gifts, the next things you look at are conviction, hallelujah, impartation, direction, and even you get to foretelling, not fortune telling, right? But telling some things that are coming, all right? So we're going to get there, but probably not today. I just wanted to give you a roadmap of where we're going. Now, some of those advanced things come when, honestly, when you start developing and growing in the prophetic. When you start growing in relationship, amen? Because prophecy, honestly, even though it is a gift, moving in the prophetic is a skill that is developed by those who spend time with God. 
And here's the thing, because when, when you value friendship with God, what starts happening when you become a friend with God? He tells you secrets. Doesn't it say in the Old Testament that God does nothing in the earth without revealing it to the prophets? Didn't God do things with people like Noah and Moses and Abraham? And he said, hey, guess what I'm about to do? Isn't that interesting? Do you know, God's looking for people to share his heart with. He's looking for that. He's looking for people even who will enter into intercession with him to dialogue over the destinies of people and nations. He's looking for friends. Now sometimes that's strange to us because we're like, you mean God wants friendship with me? Yes, he desires it. He's searching for people who he can say, look, I want to look into my heart. And that's when God really, he can use us in some simple, basic things, and he'll love us. But when he starts calling us into something deeper, it starts becoming not so much about our lives, but about his heart. Because sometimes we like to play with the prophetic and that's where it's always. Because we want to hear what God is saying to us. We want to hear what he's saying to other people. But then God starts calling us into something deeper. And he's like, I want to show you my heart. Isn't that what he did with Moses? I mean, the children of Israel, they, they saw and experienced the acts of God. A-C-T-S. Right? But Moses knew the ways of God. He knew the heart of God. God's calling his church to know his heart. Amen? So, first thing that we look at on the basic prophetic is edification. Do you think we need to be edified in the church today? Absolutely. You didn't come to church today because you're like, Maybe some of you did. Maybe some of you are sadists. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but honestly, a lot of you came to church today because you came to see friends. You came to see family. You came because you wanted to worship. You wanted to be in the presence of God. You wanted an edifying message that builds you up and encourages you. That is a good thing, right? We need edification more than ever in the body of Christ need this in the church today. So, I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures that have to do with edification, but Hebrews 3.13, and I really like this translation, keep encouraging one another so that none of you is hardened by the lure of sin. Right? I'll read that again. Keep encouraging one another, keep edifying one another, so that none of you is hardened by the lure of sin. Didn't that kind of happen prophetically today? Right? That God's like, hey, I want to mantle you with something, but there's some little things you need to let go of that are luring you and pulling you away from my purposes. Right? Also, Ephesians 4.16. Now, this is out of the Passion Translation. And you can turn there if you like or look on your phone. It says that every member, now that, that encouragement, that can be individual or corporately. But then Ephesians 4.16 says, And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. Who's been given a spiritual gift in here? Every member. Okay. Why have you been given that gift? To contribute to the growth of so we've all been given gifts so that we can contribute to everybody's growth within this body. Right? And not only in this body, but beyond this body. Amen. And as these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body, we are built up and made perfect in love. Isn't that an awesome thought that when you 
exercise your gifts, right? The gifts of the Spirit that God's given you, those things that He's put within you, you are building up people so that they'll be perfectly built up in love. That's why God's given you the gift. Not so that you can say, step aside, boys. I'm the prophet. Is that why he gave you a gift? I am the Uber Apostle that they're going to bow to me. That's not why. It's he's given a gift, right? So. <laughs> really trying to be better than I was last week. Really got a lot of bike this week. Some things I said. Right? Y'all go watch some 80s movies, right? Um, <laughs> But it's, he's given us gifts so that the entire body would be built up, encouraged, and perfected in love. That's the purpose of that. Amen. Now, these are more than just words of encouragement, though. There's an element of edification and encouragement and exhortation. Those all really they are very interlinked. Okay, But the Greek word for encouragement, and I hope I'm saying this right because I skipped is oikadamo. That sounds Japanese when I say it, right? Um, but it's it's translated as both edification, but it's also translated as building. Okay? So, these words are used interchangeably, and they mean to build up, construct, confirm, establish. Now, there's an element of them that is individual, right? But there's also an element that prophetic ministry builds up the church, amen? And it, it produces this, this edification. Now, 1 Peter 2, 5, I quote this scripture a lot. I, play, I pray this scripture a lot. But this scripture, it talks about it's being applied to believers who are Living stones are being built up, or oikadamo, 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 gozaimasu. Um, they're being built up into a spiritual house, right? So when you're releasing exhortation and edification prophetically, you are building a church. Now, as a side note, if someone claims to be a prophet and yet is against the organized church, is that scriptural? No, no I'm going to call it, they're a false prophet if they're doing that. Can we just say it? Yeah. If you see some, I'm a prophet, but the Lord has called me to lead the organized church and live in the wilderness. And God is going to judge the organized church. I'm just going to say, that's a false prophet. Because they are not moving to edify and build up the church. Right? Now, there may be an element of judgment, but if someone is standing outside prophesying those things, they don't love the church. They love themselves. And they're actually a predator, a wolf, and a false prophet. Hallelujah. Can we just call it what it is? Because there's so much crap out there right now. And y'all, that's strange fire. Okay. And God's done with that. Right. And that stuff needs to go. Right. So, hallelujah. Man, this is good. I am feeling edified preaching this. Now, when you study scripture, you'll see a lot of times that prophetic ministry was used to build up people. Right? And what about what about Timothy? Right? Didn't Paul say, let's, let's turn there, let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. 
here's Timothy, this spiritual son of Paul. He's been ordained. They've had an ordination in a prophetic presbytery where they have gathered around him. They laid hands on him. They imparted to him. They prophesied to him. That's scriptural. Right? And Paul's reminding Timothy of this. He says, this command I entrust to you, 1 Timothy 1.18, my son, in the accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning them, that by them you may fight the good fight. Keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. Among these are Hymenaeus and Alexander, who might have delivered over to Satan so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. Isn't that a fun scripture? But he's telling Timothy, right? He's telling Timothy, Timothy, you have these prophetic words that were given to encourage you. They've built you up. Now, you know what? You may be in a little bit of a test right now. We just set you in as the apostolic leader over the church at Ephesus that at some point may have had 100,000 people in it. Right? So, remember the things that we declared to you prophetically, the destiny, the encouragement. Timothy, war with those things. Declare those things. They'll get you through in the difficulty. Anybody ever done that? Anybody have those prophetic words that you've got recorded, and maybe you've got them on cassettes and you don't know how to play them anymore? And, uh, <laughs> right? and you go and listen to them, and you write them down, and you're like, you know, God, God said this. And this is an encouragement to get me through, right? That's the exhortation of prophetic ministry. And what about Paul? Yeah. You know, we just read about Paul commissioning Timothy, but there was a point where Paul is going on his way to kill Christians. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. This bright light appears, you know, he's like, Lord, is that you? He falls off his horse. He's blinded. He can't see. Right? And then the Lord speaks to Ananias. Right? For someone we've never heard of before, never hear of again. And he says, hey, hey, Ananias. Now, this isn't Ananias that dropped dead for lying to the Holy Spirit. Different Ananias. Let's just clarify that. Right? Um, <laughs> but he says, hey, Ananias, um, I want you to go where... Saul, who's been killing all your Christian brothers and sisters, I want you to go find him at this one place. And I want you to pray for him because he's anointed to present the gospel to multitudes of people and people groups. Now, how many of you, when you hear something unusual by the Spirit, you often go, Holy Spirit, say what? <laughs> Kid. Can you send me a prophetic ministry to confirm that word? Right? I need a prophetic dream. All right? I'm going to pay someone $500 online to give me prophetic ministry to confirm this. Y'all are laughing, but it happens. And we do it. Lord, But how many of you have had, a, had the Lord has spoken something to you and you're like, God, I'm not moving on this. And sometimes that's wisdom. Yeah. But, you know, it just floors me what Ananias did. Because not only did he give him specifically where Saul was, and no one had yet put out on social media that he had converted to Christianity. Right? He just went by faith and obedience to what the Lord was saying at risk to his own life, and not only did he go to go pray for him, lay hands on him to be healed so that the scales would fall off his eyes and, and that he would be filled with the Spirit. But he also hears a word from the Lord that he's this instrument of mine that I'm going to use to preach. Yeah. So I believe, because the Word says all that, for time we're not going to go there. You can go to Acts and read that in Acts chapter 9, I think it is. But he 
basically goes, and I believe that Ananias went, and not only did he do those things, but I think he declared to Paul, this is what the Lord says over your life. And I know that your world just got turned upside down. How would you feel if everything that you had been living for, you just found out wasn't true? And not only on top of that, you have been responsible for the deaths of many people at the museum. I mean, Paul was basically a terrorist who just got saved. And he has this incredible encounter with the Lord. And Ananias comes in. He never met Ananias in his life. And Ananias comes in and he's like, hey, Paul, of course he's still Saul then. The Lord sent me so that you would regain your sight. And here, I'm going to pray for you. And it says that, that something like scales, I think the passion even says something crusty fell off his eyes. Isn't that disgusting? But something that had been blinding him fell off. So if you wake up in the morning with eye crust, just be like, Holy Spirit, deliver me. Right. But he prays for him to be filled with the Spirit. Right? Paul's already, I think Paul's already born again at that point. Because he's like, Lord, is this you? Would you really knock me off my horse and blind me for three days? I don't know, Lord, that sounds like a judgment, and I don't know, I don't believe in this. And I don't even really believe in you, but I do now. I believe when he came in and Ananias released that to him, he began to declare prophetically over Paul. Paul, you're going to suffer many things. That's a good word, isn't it? I'm going to send you to all these people and you're going to declare my gospel to them. And I think that Paul, over the course of now we know that Paul talks about being caught up in a heavenly realm and you know the Lord's teaching all these things to him. But I think in the middle of difficulty, in the middle of persecution, right, all those things when you know scripture talk he talks about Paul sometimes, but he was beaten and left for dead. I believe Paul was resurrected from the dead. And I believe that encouraging word kept him moving forward because he knew this prophetically was declared over my life. Now, it wasn't the only time it happened. We know at the Antioch church, prophets and teachers were ministering to the Lord, and the Lord said, set aside Paul and Silas for the ministry I have for them. Because God's progressive, yes. right? He'll, he'll set you on a path. He'll set you on a course, and he'll give us those encouraging words that we hang on to. But then there are moments when you're, you're walking in obedience and you're, you're moving in what you know. And the Lord says, okay, you've come this far. Guess what? I'm just going to open it up a little bit more and let you see me a little more. And usually you're like, God, I'm just trying to do this one thing. He's like, surprise. Right? There's more. You're a chosen vessel. You're an instrument. So when you get stoned to death, I wonder what it would be like to be raised from the dead. I mean, I don't really want to know. I mean, I'm just being honest. But what what kind of experience is that? To be raised from the dead. I love the accounts of revival where people would go into trances and like, They fall into a trance and they come out of it saved because they saw hell. That's a big incentive. And what is it like to encounter God in that way? But this, this, these prophetic things, this, this edification, this exhortation, 
this encouragement, right? It sounds so simple, but it, this prophetic thing can keep us moving forward. Amen. Yes. Very quickly, exhortation is the second thing. Exhortation means to prompt and urge the church to draw near to God. Do we sometimes as the church need exhortation? Did we get that by the Spirit this morning? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Our, our basic prophetic ministry is to direct people and encourage people to draw near to Christ. Amen. And then the third one, and I'm going over these quickly, comfort. Do you need comfort sometimes? Right. And I'm not just talking about laying in a good bed, eating chocolate bonbons, binging that one. That's pretty cool, too. But I'm talking about to be strengthened, to be reinforced, and to be refreshed. Amen. Physically, mentally, and spiritually. Because sometimes in the midst of things, God will prophetically strengthen you and encourage you. Because we need that. Right? Life, ministry, Sometimes it's just the simplest words. It doesn't have to be a word of, you know, Sean Bolt's calling out your address in a meeting. Well, that's really cool, too. He does that like, God knows where you live. He cares for you this much. Right? He's watching you, right? <laughs> no, that's Santa. But just to say, listen, well done. You're doing good. I love you. You're doing a good job. Thank you. I mean, it can be. Sometimes we try to be so profound in the prophetic when sometimes it's the simplest encouragements that we need. Right? To keep us moving forward. Amen. Now, here's the thing. Every believer can move in this. Find a partner. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you on Father's Day because I know many of you have things to do next week. Right? <laughs> Nobody comes next week. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, y'all. I'll give you another free gift. Um, so next week we're going to move toward the advance. This was just a little intro. God's wanting to take us somewhere here. Right? He, he's, he's asking us to further grow up a little bit because he's taking us as his church somewhere. We have to be people who hear what he's saying. We have to be people who obey what he's saying. We have to be people to declare what he's saying. And in the middle of it, the Lord's saying, man, I, I want to keep you encouraged and built up. And I'm taking you on this journey and I'm mantling you for war. <coughs> it's time to align with the Lord. Amen. Yes. It's time to align with the Lord and what he's doing and what he's saying. Amen. So, next week we'll get into what I wanted to do was to talk about how we use the prophetic to get people saved. Because it's time that we take the prophetic out of the four walls of the church and begin to take it where people get saved because we read their mail. Right? Without being freaky. Any of you seen that Charlie Shant just bought tickets to go into the autonomous zone in Seattle? Well, you have to get a plane ticket. You probably have to buy a ticket from them. He's to go into some of those places, into some of the darkest places yeah. in Wendy. Right? Ooh. That's what God's wanting to equip us yeah. to do. Now, yeah. I'll be honest, that's uncomfortable for me. Because I like it all. <laughs> right? We could just sit here and prophesy to one another and build one another up and get fat and happy. And, and the earth is in turmoil. Earth 
is in turmoil. And there are answers that we've been given from heaven. One of the things we did in Japan, and I am closing, but we, we saw people born again just through prophetic ministry. Right? Fortune telling was huge in Japan. And it was like in, you know, here in America, it's like, you know, behind a burned down strip mall, there's a fortune teller's place that you go to. They were in nice malls in Japan, right? So you know what we did? We started advertising that we would give you a reading. Yeah. <gasps> you know what? People came and we read their mail and then we'd say, this is Jesus that knows the secrets of your heart. He knows you. And he's calling you to encounter him. John Paul Jackson used to do that at Burning Man. People in his ministry still do it. Biggest New Age festival festival in the world. When they first went in, they had them set on the back, in the back section. And people started coming in. They said, we do spiritual readings here. People would come in and they'd be like, there's a presence here that isn't anywhere else in the festival. What's here? Can we just meditate here? <laughs> and many of them would have encounters with Jesus because he was present. It's remarkable what God did and still does. There's some of those people who are going in and saying, you know, and doing it in a very non threatening way with a lot of wisdom, but through the prophetic are seeing New Agers, witches, all those people. It's time that we begin to take the prophetic anointing outside of the four walls. So let's stand together this morning. I don't want to keep you guys. I know it's Father's Day. There are many things going on. And you've already been mantled. And you're being mantled with a new prophetic anointing. So Father, today I thank you for what you've already been saying. Lord, we're letting go in this moment. Lord, I thank you that there's just a breaking off. As you took that sword today, and as you just shattered some things, Lord, I thank you that we're in a season, season uh, of being uh, some things letting go so that we can be mantled with the greater authority, the greater anointing. Lord, we're aligning with you right now in our hearts, in our lives, in everything that you're doing. So, Father, I thank you even now there's a further, there's a greater commissioning of prophetic anointing that's coming on your people. Father, not just individually, though I thank you that we can function individually, but there is a, a corporate prophetic anointing that is coming upon this house. Father God, that you're commissioning us not only to prophesy and to intercede, but Father, you're commissioning us as prophetic evangelists. Father God, in the harvest field. Thank you for that anointing. So many new things coming into this place. So, Father, thank you today for what you're doing. We just agree with you today. Lord, we agree with what you're saying, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we agree with you. We align with what you're saying and doing today. And thank you for the more that's coming on people today. Thank you for the more that's coming on. Father, I thank you even for fathers today. Father, that you're commissioning men today to lead in this move. Not that women can't lead. But Father, we're going to walk together. And I thank you that you're mantling husbands, fathers, sons to lead prophetically, to war prophetically in what you're doing. So Father, thank you today. We just receive the more that you're doing in Jesus' name. Wow, so I just think that throughout this week, some of you guys, God's going to really, really speak. He's going to reveal some things, and you're going to begin to already see the fruit of this working in your life. So I commission you today to move in war, <laughs> spiritually, right? and to move in this realm of prophetic evangelism. We'll talk more about that.
Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Be blessed. Have a great day. Remember, uh, Wednesday night at 630, we'll just continue to build this, this time of intercession and prayer. We had a really powerful time Wednesday night, and I just think God's going to just continue to do those things. Amen. We welcome Logan Williams today. <laughs>